the longevity of a human is going to be largely determined by how well they stay in parasympathetic. So family, hugely important for that. We feel connected. Our stress levels go down. Our serotonin and oxytocin levels go up. We feel very good. The more we get outside, a lot of these blue zones are actually entrained to the natural light cycles, governs our parasympathetic. And the more we meditate and do mindfulness practices where the things that happen in our life aren't nearly as stressful because we relate to them in a healthier way is great. And then if you can. Welcome to another episode of the Matter Over Mind Experience. I'm your host, master trainer and weight management expert. Narado Zico Powell. Today, I have Dr. Anthony Balducci, fantastic guy with a whole lot of knowledge. Can you know your boy always delivers, right? So yes, of course, I'm like the UPS man. I'm going to give you great things every single time, except if you don't want the package. I can't do anything about that. But see, Dr. Balducci is a renowned health expert who helps women and men over 40 optimize their health. You know how much I talk about optimization, not just feeling better, but optimize their health, right? So they can obtain a fit body and mind for longevity. So I don't even have to tell you what, what we're going to talk about today. Longevity with everything, longevity is going to be the end of our discussion, right? So if you want to talk about a fit mind, you want to talk about being in the best shape that you can be, optimize your mental health, mental clarity, you know, lengthen your lifespan, you know, anything about improving your health. This is what, this is the episode you need to listen to. You know, I've talked to so many people who say, you know, I hit 35 or 40 and man, the weight can't seem to come off no matter what I do. And I always say that's connected to accelerated aging. That's connected to chronic inflammation. There's just so many things that we don't realize that just telling someone, hey, eat less and work out more, that's not going to work. Not if you, do, you have an infectious metabolism, not if you have underlying health conditions. And we're going to break some of these myths in this episode today. And if everybody remember, before I get Anthony on here, that the Zika recommendation page is live and ready to rock and roll. So you can click on there and see some of the fantastic products that I have helped to lower my inflammation, improve my health, help me with my fitness. And of course, because you know, your boy is a nice guy, I have discount codes on there so you can get discounts on some fantastic products. And with that being said, my man, Dr. Anthony, welcome to the show. Zico, thanks for having me. Thank you for being here, my friend. Thank you for being here, my man. And let's get this puppy started, though. Let's get yeah. this started because we're talking about health and optimization, and I'm really excited for this episode, right? So... There are so many needs for men and women when we talk about health and optimization, right? So let's talk about under 30, I'm sorry, 40, under 40 and over 40. What are some things that you see that are different in those needs? Mm -hmm. Well, I think like the, the easiest way to explain it is that under 40, the body just has a certain amount of vitality and resilience of youth where you can get away with more things. You know, you have the 20 year olds who are really into fitness that still stay out late drink too much alcohol and still are able to get up, not have a terrible hangover and get their exercise in. And they don't have like the consequences. But I think many people find when they're over 40, if they eat a big cheat meal or they drink too much alcohol or they miss a night of sleep, it's like the compounding effect is, is pretty massive. So your margin for error goes down over 40 and the bad habits that many people carry with themselves from their twenties and thirties end up showing up as like lack of well being in their forties. And that lays the foundation, whether it's through the inflammation poor sleep and dysregulated cortisol and stress hormones for some problems in the fifties where people start getting on pharmaceutical medications. So it's really like the stacking effect is the nature of these bodies. They they're, they're in line with natural cycles. They have a building up period where they reach their peak. And then there's a decline period. And the cool thing about the fact that if you get the right habits in nutrition, sleep, exercise, supplementation, and mindset, you can kind of offset that aging curve. But otherwise, you have to understand that our bodies are riding this kind of down sweeping wave if we do nothing. And, and that's why over 40, you need to be even more dialed in. So it's really about just getting optimized in your routines and your daily actions, because the margin for error is a lot smaller. And quite frankly, I'll also say this, like our joints age, you know, it's another decade of being alive, right? The exercises that you could do when you had bulletproof knees in your teens are not the same things you can do when you have some early onset of some arthritis in your 40s. So you got to tailor your approach. 
And then many of us over 40 also have busy families and schedules, right? So you also have to make sure it's actually sustainable. It's like not the only thing you're doing is working and working on your fitness and dating or whatever. It's like you're managing a family. So the whole behavioral psychology part of this is massive too, especially if you've been struggling for some time. So it's a deep emotional, mental aspect of this as well. Speak for yourself, man, because I'm 40 years old and I'm Peter Pan over here. So, you know, I, 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 I have a... I'm trying to I'm 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 trying to stay the same age forever if I possibly can but you know that well, doesn't I'll say, you, work you're out that the way. you're the you're the example of what's possible and I want to say that but I mean like it, it, with the with the speak for yourself I mean we look around right now in the United States there's over 50% of people over 40 who are obese overweight to obese on multiple prescription medications, cardiovascular issues, diabetes and blood pressure issues. And what I'm trying to say is like, that's not by accident, right? That's the mix of our culture. And that's also because the body goes on a certain decline. So you are a beautiful example of what's possible. You can turn that complete curve around and be better at 50 than you even were at 40, but you are pushing a ball like uphill against some cultural pressures, physical pressures. And it's just like, we need to understand the reality of the situation. Yeah, you're right, my friend. You're right, my friend. You know, I was just yanking your chain. I was mm-hmm. just yanking your chain. But no, you're right, though. It's uh, when I go into the gym and people, even younger people say to me, you're 40? Mm-hmm. And they see how I train. And, you know, I mean, I'm in the gym twice a day, six days a week consistently. And I I strength train a lot. And I love doing it. I'm extremely active and I'm fit. Um, And of course, we talk about my, I've been off my medications for over five years now by nice. making lifestyle changes, right? And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying it like you said being the exception right Mm -hmm. um to the rule versus most people feel like oh i'm at this age i should be declining and we culturally you're so right we think about that and we it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy Mm -hmm. because we're supposed to be declining so we do decline right Mm -hmm. with that being said let's talk about sustainable strategies that general things you can tell people that are 40 or even over 40 to help them to optimize their health well, I, I think there's, we all have the general intuition and sense that there's a couple categories of our lives when it comes to our health behaviors that we need core habits and routines around. We need to sleep well, and we need a good circadian rhythm balance. If you miss that part, you're creating a whole metabolic hormonal soup in your body that makes it hard for you to be well. So sleep is foundational, and it's also a challenge for many people in today's day and age. You need foundational habits around what you're putting in your mouth in terms of food intake. And this is probably one of the biggest levers for people, right? Because as you've alluded to in your, in your story and everything you've shared on the podcast, the foods you're eating are either reducing inflammation or creating inflammation. They're either creating a good stable blood sugar and energy levels. So we need like a routine with our nutrition that works with our schedules. That's actually sustainable. And I'd love to share on that. That's something I have pretty dialed in for people 40 plus you need to have regular exercise. And I, I, when I teach this, I think it's a combination of both strength training, which is like the fountain of youth way to tap into some of your genes, build muscle, have a good metabolism. That's great. But also just straight up daily movement. Like we need to get to walking more. And that's like more important for people over 40 than formal workouts. And I, I like to introduce this concept because many people have the myth that you need to exercise like crazy to be in amazing shape after 40 exercise is helpful. And it actually becomes fun, as you stated, when you get more fit, but but getting your sleep right, getting a good nutrition plan and walking every single day. I've helped people lose over hundred pounds just doing that after 40. So like understanding the order of importance is good because a lot of people still believe after 40, you can out exercise a crappy diet. And I'm saying, no, fix your sleep, fix your nutrition, and then slot in some really smart strategic exercise, you know, a couple of times per week. And then you have the foundational plan. And of course, there are supplements and products that can help with longevity, reducing inflammation and all this good stuff too. But like understanding the pyramid of where you need to start, I think is massive. And I would say down there with the sleep circadian rhythm, which I put at the foundation, I would also say mindset is down there too, like more foundational than even the nutrition habits. Cause we can sit here and talk about superfoods or fasting or protein, carbs, fats, macros, and stuff like that. But unless you have this deep emotional connection to your health and fitness, unless you're very clear about why this is important for you, why is this important for you over 40, which is a typically a different reason why it was important for you when you were in your 20s and 30s. Like that is the emotive power that helps you make better choices day in and day out. That's the power that helps you stay on track when there's inevitable pressures and stresses in your life routine. So it, it's a full picture thing. And I think the cool thing is 
it is a whole person journey. Like by simply walking this journey, committing to better fitness, you're going to get a longer life, but you're also going through this massive personal development process that is going to like put you on this hero's journey to like self-actualization, to deepening your spirituality, to becoming and feeling aligned by getting your body right. Like there's so many beautiful things that come from this journey. You just said a whole lot there that I'm really, I was just kind of sitting here stewing because we're so much alike. Mm -hmm. In fact, I've, I've, I've commonly asked people, I said, when you spend, what's more important, the time you spend in the gym or time you spend outside the gym? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people do say, oh, it's the time I spend in the gym. Mm -hmm. So I say, okay, let's say you work out an hour, hour and a half a day. If you're crazy like me, sometimes two hours, that's still around about 10%, 15% of your day, right? What about the other 85 to 90%? Is that less important than the time you spend in the gym? Do you think that 10, 15% is going to override that 85 and, and based on what you do in that 85, because for example, when you work out, your body creates inflammation, you know, yes. that doc, right? So if in your diet, if you don't have a low inflammation or you can say anti-inflammation diet and you're working out, then guess what? You're actually creating more issues. Yes. If you're in a caloric deficit and you're trying to out train, then you can actually end up being malnourished because that's so, you know, that's why when I talk to a lot of people and they're like, caloric deficit i'm like that's one piece of the puzzle yes but there's so many other things that comes into it which ties me to my next question because you said nutrition and you're dialed it in for people over 40 mm -hmm. do you mind elaborating on that for me for sure now nutrition is not just about like facts and understanding what foods are good it's about understanding your daily schedule your behaviors and your environment this is like your daily routine. And one thing I love about health is we wake up every day and we get this fresh new day to like take actions that are either aligned or moving us in a direction that we don't want to go. And nutrition provides structure for your day. So before we actually talk about foods with any of our fit mother or fit father program members, the first thing we do is we help them decide on a proactive meal timing schedule setup. We're creating the scaffolding of your day, helping you be proactive to learn when you're going to eat. Because the opposite, what we consider poor nutrition, is typically unplanned, reactive, sporadic, improper foods. And when we actually have a plan and a system and it has like a little bit of a structure to it, we always eat better. All of us do. So the game is to create that routine for us. And Zico, I guarantee you have yours dialed into a T over all these years of doing this stuff. You have your own unique nutrition plan. It's different than mine because we have different food preferences, different schedules, et cetera. So what we do is we present people with a couple different meal timing schedule setups that they can choose from. An example would be the classic breakfast, lunch, snack, dinner. That totally works for many people. You could do intermittent fasting where you either skip that first meal or have breakfast and have an early dinner and you're compressing your eating window. That works. If you have a variable schedule on the weekend or there's some stuff with your kids, you need to actually have it like slotted in so it's a sustainable schedule that doesn't cause a lot of friction. And I like to think back to like maybe almost like 15, 20 years ago, the nutrition advice we used to say is like the six small meals a day, you know, pack all your meals and like do all these things. And like, man, what a hassle that was. No wonder no one would really stick to that unless you were like a competitive bodybuilder because it's, it's too much work. So get the structure in place. The next part is we are big fans of balancing these forces of consistency and variety. You need both. You need to be consistent because that's how you actually get more reps in with the food and, and it makes it more turnkey without a lot of willpower. But you need some variety because otherwise eating the same food every day, chicken and broccoli like sucks and no one wants to stick with that. So we love meal one and meal two or just your first meal of the day to be a go-to standardized meal. Like dial it in. Whatever your first meal is, dial it in completely. So let's say it's the classic breakfast we're talking about. What a lot of people do well with are egg-based recipes. So a couple eggs, avocado, or eggs and fruit. Awesome. You can get it anywhere. You can make sunny side up, scrambles, omelets, whatever. It's like high protein, healthy fats, good for you with maybe some fruit or some more healthy fats with the avocado, fine. You can also do power smoothies. You know, you can throw things like walnuts, plant-based protein powder, maybe some wild blueberries, hemp seeds, chia seeds, almond milk, whatever. You make your power smoothie. Or maybe you do something vegetarian like oatmeal, overnight oats or something like that with some power stuff on there. What matters is not what you choose. It's just that you choose something that you enjoy that's turnkey. Because every day you get up, you want to have something that is just an automatic switch. Because no matter what happened yesterday, maybe yesterday went well, maybe it didn't go so well, you have something to get back on track because nutrition is about minimizing drifting and moving in the right direction over a long period of time. So it's okay if you had a cheat 
day or something didn't go well, but if that turns into a cheat week, cheat month, cheat year, now you're in a huge hole, like a couple of thousand extra calories in one day is no big deal. As long as you know how to guide back on track. So that standardized meal one is essential. And we'd like to have people dial that in nutritionally speaking, the things to focus on are proteins, healthy fats, slightly lower in the carbohydrates. It's a time where your body naturally has some hormones that um, can regulate blood sugar pretty well. So that's what we like to do for breakfast. And one thing prior to breakfast that I think is very relevant for everyone talking about nutrition is to get your hydration on point first thing in the morning. Like the first thing that fit fathers and fit mothers do is they actually get morning hydration in. They drink 20 to 32 ounces of water right in the morning. And this simple ritual is key because it obviously gets the hydration that our bodies need for good energy, but it's a great way to start your day. And it's like a refresh. It's almost like it's more than just like a physical habit. It's a mental, emotional habit. I wake up, boom, here's some good stuff in my, in my body. And it starts to kick in this good cycle every day. So the other day, right, I was uh, someone that's been on the show a few times and Anya, uh, she posted something about what did what's the first thing you do when you wake up? Do you drink coffee, which a lot of us do, or do you drink water? And a lot of people said, oh, I drink my tea or I drink my coffee or whatever. And she said, you realize when you wake, your body is dehydrated. Completely. So the first thing you need to do is drink water when you mm -hmm. wake up. Yes. On top of that, it, it aids with digestion, right? Now, yes. there's nothing wrong with drinking tea. You can drink your tea and your coffee later. But that's when we're talking about raises and cortisol and the dawn yes. effect and all that stuff. You don't want to drink caffeine like right when you wake up because yes. you know, that can interrupt your sleep and stuff. Oh, by the way, if we're interested in improving your sleep, everyone, I have an article uh, on ZikaHill.com on how to reset your circadian rhythm. So I'll talk about what you should do in the morning, mm -hmm. um, like exposing yourself to sunlight, the role that caffeine plays. Um, you know, what to do in the evening, because a lot of times we think about our sleep hygiene, we think about what we do at night, mm -hmm. but really it starts when we wake up and what we do in the morning, because we have to reset that circadian clock. Mm -hmm. And once you're in the habit of resetting that circadian clock, sleep becomes a whole lot easier because we reverse it in today's society. Yes. We're exposed to blue light at night when we're watching TV, yes. but we don't get any sunlight in the morning. So at nighttime, our body kind of is kind of tricked, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, and, um, which is one of the reasons why we struggle to get quality sleep. So it's on the website, zikahealth.com. Of course, the website is in the show notes. Um, so everybody check that out. And it's helped uh, thousands of people have reached out to me and tell me how much that article has helped them. So because like you said, sleep and nutrition is such a big part of it, which is like the 85%. Um, and those aren't the only things, but they're big parts of that 85% along with mentality, which helps us with that 10 to 15%, which is being in the gym. It's like I told my friend today, I was talking to her and I said, I don't eat a lot. I don't work out so I can eat a lot. I eat a lot so I can work out because it's something that I just enjoy doing. Maybe because I'm an egomaniac and I just love being stronger than everybody else. But that's a different conversation for a different day. For but, sure. Uh, no, everyone, we have some more stuff to talk about. You know, Dr. Anthony over here is dropping some bomb on us and giving us some knowledge. But before I go to the last few topics today, I want to talk about one of my favorite companies, The Amino Co. Yes, you know I was going there, right? See, their products are 100% science-backed, built on amino acid technology, first funded by NASA, and further refined through rigorous research and independent clinical trials. So yes, today, I'm going to tell you about Perform, which I just drank, like, I would say two hours ago before my workout, because I had to bang through it before I got to this interview, right? It's an essential amino acid-based formulation designed to improve muscle performance during exercise, enhance mental clarity and concentration, reduce fatigue and dehydration, and minimize recovery times. Now, what I love about Perform and even all their products is not just their E, not BCAs, but EAAs, essential amino acids. But the um, doctor will put together specific amino acids that work well together to give you these results. Plus, it has creatine. How many times do we forget the importance of creatine? Yes, every, most athletes unless there's some medical reason, which I can't think of one, should have creatine a part of their protocol. I mean, creatine has been around and been studied forever for mental health and physical health and performance, right? So I love that they put that together and you and they, you don't have to buy it separately. And because of that, the caffeine is all about 60 milligrams per serving. Now your boy does double up and go to 120, um, you know, because I need a little bit more. But still, 
it's it, it's not 300 milligrams. Not saying caffeine is bad, but constantly dosing yourself with like 300, 400 milligrams of caffeine and sugar is not the way to go. But with the essential aminos and the creatine that also helps your mental and physical performance, you don't need as much caffeine to bang through your workout. So I absolutely love their stuff. But check out this research, right? So 20% increase in exercise completed, 22% increase in endurance, 11% increase in peak performance doing exercise, and 10% improvement in cognitive function doing exercise. So I love to, to um to read off that research because before I before I use perform, you know your boy already, your boy goes hard in the paint, right? But after using perform in my work, I use basically before my workouts. It, comp it really helped me to, to bang through my workouts. Like it really, really did. Especially because, you know, I'm trying to put on some more muscle because I'm an egomaniac myself over here. So, and one more thing I got to tell you, it tastes great because they, are, they also have like all natural flavors. So that's another thing that I love about them because, you know, I'm health first, right? So they have the all natural flavors. That's raw from the, uh, don't have a bunch of artificial flavoring, the sweeteners and all that stuff. Absolutely love it. The website is ZikaHealth.com. I'm sorry, said that wrong. Minoco.com slash ZikaHealth. You click on it and guess what? 30% off. 30% off their fantastic products. And with, and of course, the website is going to be in the description of the podcast. I have to say that. I have to say that. And with that being said, back to the regular scheduled programming. Now, we talk about nutrition, nutrition, sleep, mentality. Those are part of the 85%. There are other things to consider, but those are part of 85%. Oh, by the way, my dialed in breakfast is, because uh, I'm Jamaican, is eggs and plantains. I love plantains. I, so that's my go-to. Like I get, Pretty much every breakfast, I'm eggs and plantains. I mm -hmm. just That's just my thing. That's my dialed in. I look forward to it after, I, after I'm done with it. I look forward to it the next day. So that's mm -hmm. my go-to, right? Anyway, with that being said, let's talk about exercise. Um, so what role does exercise play in overall health optimization? And what types of exercises are best in general for people who are over 40? Well, I, I got to say, first off, I want to return to the distinction I made on exercise earlier that I want people over 40 to start thinking about two types of exercise. There is daily movement or daily activity as category one, and then formal workouts as number two. Your body needs daily activity. This means moving more, walking more, accumulating more steps. So however, and whenever you're getting that is beneficial. This is often like if you want to get a good circadian rhythm, some kind of morning walk. If that's possible, after you hydrate, you get up, you walk outside, you get the sunshine. That can be an amazing way to start your day. You can also walk after having a meal. It aids in digestion, helps stabilize blood sugar levels, just accumulating steps. Because if we look at the people around the world who live the longest, like the centenarians, these pockets of longevity, they are not doing P90X. Although they'd probably benefit if they did pine P90X, they're outside, they're gardening, they're walking up hills, they're active with their families, they're doing daily activities. So the mental trap that people fall into is, oh, Dr. A, I'm too busy to work out. I just don't have the time. So they do absolutely nothing. Whereas if you were able to do micro activity throughout the day, get a walk in still, your health would be phenomenally better. Your circadian rhythm would be better. Your hormone and hunger appetite regulation be so much better. So daily activity is a daily thing. You check that box, you move your body more in any way you can. Taking the stairs counts, parking further away counts, walking while you're on the phone counts. Anything you can get movement is, is the number one most important thing. Now, formal workouts, this is going to be like, there's a couple dimensions of physical fitness we want to be strong at as we age. Strength, which means resistance training, lifting heavy things. Cardio, which means the, the, the heart, your heart health, your blood flow, your nitric oxide levels. And then flexibility and mobility. We want to have good joint function in all these planes that the body naturally moves in. Because if you're 60 and 70 and your spine is all jacked up, your shoulders hurt, you don't have the vitality that you, that you need. So we want to train all these dimensions. And that's why in the kind of workouts that we like to prescribe, we call them metabolic resistance training. And it's basically taking the fundamental strength training motions, squats, deadlifts, rows, pull-ups, push-ups, shoulder press, curls, like every way you can move your body and load that's very natural. And you do these in a circuit fashion. So you get the strength training and the cardio and the flexibility and mobility all in one. And I'm not saying this is the only way to do exercise, right? You can do strength training and then you can do cardio as a separate workout, also very viable. I'm just finding that for many people over 40 who feel busy and time-strapped, 
the promise is this, you can get a 30 minute to, to one hour workout in even as low as 30 minutes, right? Pulsed two to three times a week and get a phenomenal metabolic benefit. And, and like the cool thing about the right kinds of workouts that I'm talking that are higher intensity is you get a metabolic benefit for over like 24 to 48 hours after exercise. It's not about how many calories you burn in the gym. It's you created a stimulus in your muscles, in your mitochondria that is going to benefit you for time. So when you look at your week ahead, you slot in like meetings, a couple pulses of high intensity exercise, but you understand that your baseline is the walking and the movement. And now your goals shift a little bit. If you're at a good lean weight and you want to pack on muscle, then you're doing more classic strength training with progressive resistance, lifting heavy things, taking a lot of rest days. But for someone over 40, who's just looking for generalized fitness, doing these hybrid combination workouts are super time efficient, very, very helpful. And, uh, I've seen it work literally like, so on the, we've had over a, close to a hundred thousand people go through our programs in over a hundred countries. And they do these workouts and they're getting insane results. Like we have people in their sixties who have six pack abs for the first time ever. And it's because the nutrition with the walking in this, it, it's just really effective. So what I hearing is you're calling me fat because I don't have six pack abs. No, thank you so much for like, for making me feel bad. I'm just kidding. Of course, you know, your boy got six pack abs. What do you know what I'm doing, <laughs> what I do over here? No, but I want to talk about something else though. Seriously. Um, because we're talking about working out and um, the importance of working out. Oh, you're talking about longevity. You were talking about longevity and, you know, people, there are people in, in many blue zones who they, they're not doing P90X, they're not doing insanity, but they're living long. Mm -hmm. Something I want to add to that. And it's part of that 85% that we're talking about, but community, you know, like community, like we talk about oxytocin and how it's like a, it's your superpower, your longevity hormone. Right. So like, you know, love talking to people, community, you know, smiling, hugging people. Like that's also very important when you, research a lot of these countries that are blue zones they tend to really be poorer countries yes and poorer countries are focused in community you yes. know and that's how they survive so that's another thing too like we try to isolate ourselves a lot i mean you can go to the gym work out all you want trying to have the best nutrition but then you know you, if you you to, to add to that you need to have community there's a lot that goes along with that that helps to naturally relax you and i know you have something to say go ahead well i certainly do but you're, you're right i was actually going to propose the mechanism for why community is important and it's basically this to live a long life you must keep your nervous system in a relaxed parasympathetic state the majority of the time so we have the two modes of the nervous system the sympathetic which is the go foot on the gas we're afraid, we're hitting a hard workout, the heart rate's going up, and that's good for short bursts. We need to be able to engage sympathetically, but stay in parasympathetic dominance. This is where digestion happens, blood flow increases, heart rate slows down. We look even in like the animal kingdom, like a mouse is constantly has a high heart rate. It's afraid of being eaten by absolutely everything. The mouse lives for 18 months. A tortoise is chilling. Nothing's trying to eat a tortoise. That thing lives for 120 years, moving as slow as possible, very parasympathetic state. And I'm going to make the, the response that the longevity of a human is going to be largely determined by how well they stay in parasympathetic. So family, hugely important for that. We feel connected. Our stress levels go down. Our serotonin and oxytocin levels go up. We feel very good. The more we get outside, a lot of these blue zones are actually entrained to the natural light cycles, governs our parasympathetic and the more we meditate and do mindfulness practices where the things that happen in our life aren't nearly as stressful because we relate to them in a healthier way is great. And then if you can, on top of this baseline of parasympathetic, which walking every day and breathing through your nose is like a hack to get into parasympathetic. It's like a walking meditation massive. And then you engage sympathetically in high intensity exercise a few times per week. Now you have a recipe for living long. And I'll say this, if someone's not sleeping well, foot's on the gas, pushing hard on their career, even though they're trying to eat healthy, they're always like low level stressed. This is going to tap into your longevity massively and decrease it. Even if you're doing some of the right things in these other areas, the fundamental mechanism is the nervous system state. So anything we do to support that is, is really the key. I have an example on that, actually. I love, I love that you brought that down. I always joke about like eating. We're talking about we should eat in a parasympathetic state. It's literally, it's called rest and digest, right? Mm -hmm. So I say, no, the, the opposite of that is what? Fight or flight. Well, who fights and eats at the same time? Like <laughs> on guard, you know, like, you know, think just, just think about it logically. Yeah. But my example is uh, I just came back from Jamaica. By the time this airs, it's going to be like two months ago. And uh, the, the week I was there, I slept like a baby mm. every night because most of my family 
I still have a lot of family down there. And we were laughing and joking, talking about cartoons. And I'm a big child. So we, we're just laughing and just having a wonderful time. And I'll take a shower and I'll just fall asleep. Yeah. Like nothing. Because I was just naturally in my parasympathetic state. Versus if I was stressed, that may not necessarily happen as much. So even if you try to reset your circadian rhythm, your your stress levels has an impact on that as well. And that's another reason why community is important because you to 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 to, to sleep well, you need to be in a parasympathetic mm-hmm. state. So if you're constantly stressed, constantly fight or fight, your body thinks you're in danger. Your body doesn't want to rest. It yes. wants to stay alert, right? Yes. Which it means it increases cortisol, right? Which is a stress hormone that increases blood glucose, increases blood pressure. And when you have a lot of sugar in a high pressurized tube floating around, that's your circulatory health. That's impacting your brain. It's impacting end organ function. Cortisol is immunosuppressive because when the body's in a stress fight or flight state, it's not trying to ward off long-term cancer or long-term infection. It's trying to deal with a short-term stress. So as we get older, our immune system naturally gets weaker. It's called senescence. And I can share some things about how to offset that. But imagine putting stress hormones on top of that. It's no surprise people get infections, cancer diagnoses, let alone inflammatory foods on top of this picture. So stress needs to be addressed fundamentally. And the things that people are all touting on social media for longevity help make the nervous system more resilient. Cold tubs help you regulate your parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. Heat teaches you how to relax when you're in a sauna in a stressful environment. So all of these things regulate the nervous system fundamentally. So I want people to really get this down and nail this. And again, light is a way that signals activity. When we have the blue sky, it is daytime. The metabolism through the light signals in the eyes is saying it's active time. So let alone if you have every day and you're getting the wrong light patterns, that's as fundamental of a signal for this nervous system as anything else. And that's constantly jacked up. You can actually get these complete opposite cortisol patterns where your cortisol is low in the morning and you're dragging ass. It's high at night and you feel stressed. Your blood sugar is high at night. So you're not sleeping well. Growth hormone gets suppressed. so You're not repairing. So like Man, that's the worst thing we want. So these fundamental rhythms in, in getting aligned with natural law is the way that you live a long time. Wow, that's absolutely true, man. I love it. I love it. And honestly, I want you to elaborate on the immune system because you say you have some information on that, right? Because you say that we natu- naturally our immune system um, lowers as we get older, but you have some ideas that you can share about improving our immune system. Do you mind doing that for us? For sure. Well, I I think, again, the immune system's job is to respond to things that it perceives as foreign. And it's really fascinating. Like each of our cells has these little tags on them called MHCs that our immune system's constantly scanning all these cells to be like, is this us? Is this us? Is this us? And to find something that's not us or foreign, then it mounts this inflammatory response to take care of it. And the immune system's massively complex. There's a lot of different types of cells, but things that make the immune system flare up and go crazy are things that you want to get out of your life. And food is one of the number one things. There are certain foods you eat that damage your digestive tract that lead to leakage of foreign proteins into your blood, things like the too much dairy, too much of the wrong kinds of wheat and non-organic wheat, these foods that produce mucus in us, these foods that cause bloating, they're effectively triggering the immune system to go haywire. And we have seen a massive increase in uh, auto autoimmune diseases, which is basically the immune system freaking out because it's getting different kinds of either viral or particularly food triggers, and then it attacks your own cells. And this is at the basis of this explosion, right? So to regulate your immune system, you need to start eating proper natural foods that your body agrees with. And this is a little bit where I wish I could give you a simpler answer, but we all have unique sensitivities. There are some healthy foods that you might not tolerate well that I can tolerate well. So we all kind of need to like figure this out through a little bit of trial and error, right? And so things to look for when you eat a food, do you get a mucus? reaction? Do you get a scratchy throat? Are you clearing your throat? Do you get mucus in your nose or does it bloat you? Or do you just generally feel lethargic or maybe achy afterwards? These are all signs of the immune system stimulating to that food. So imagine if you're just giving a little bit of that poison all the time throughout the week, your immune system is never going to be quite right. The other aspect of this is We need to give our bodies a chance to be both in anabolic metabolism, where we're training and then we're building up new proteins, new muscle tissue. We need to balance that with catabolic metabolism, where we're in a state where the body can break down and take out the trash. Just like in our homes, we have people running around, there's food, there's garbage that's accumulated. All of our cells at the same process, they're going through and they're they're metabolizing in the end range and the mitochondria and the different processes with the proteins and the enzymes, they create metabolic garbage. Fasting 
is a tool to give the body a break to clear out the garbage. And this means you're just not having food for a period of time. We can get into like how that works, but it is a fat, it is a factor in longevity is people who live a long time have some kind of fasting practice baked in. And it's no mistake that all the ancient religions, most of the major ones have some kind of fasting practice. They say it's for spiritual purposes to give you a chance to like, look at your hunger signals, look at your attachment to worldly things and all that's valid. But I'm also telling you on like a truly biochemical level, your cells take out the trash. Now, if you want to get like real on the research, there's a guy, Walter Longo, a researcher from uh, UCSF. He basically shown that if you do a three-day fast, your body basically recycles all these old damaged immune cells, stimulates your stem cell production in your bone marrow, and you kind of get like a fresh boost to your immune system. So there's a lot of stuff that can be done. You can't just bottle this in a pill. The good news is exercise mimics some of these same cellular signals of fasting. So exercise is like beneficial for many uh, reasons, but also like using the fasting and nutritionally is really good too. And there's also some supplements as well that help regulate the immune system. The adaptogenic mushrooms are very good. Getting foods that are good in certain antioxidants are very good. The fruits and the vegetables that, that you tolerate very well. We can get down a rabbit hole on the supplements because there are beneficial things, but fundamentally inflammatory foods got to go and you should probably do some fasting for longevity as well. Now. If you really want to learn more and optimize, get this man's program. Just get this man's program. Let me just tell you that, right? I mean, he's dropping just the like the tip of the iceberg of the stuff they know and why people get their benefits, the benefits that they do, because these are the things that I practice myself. I then one of the reasons why actually the main reasons why I'm off all my medication. I mean, fasting has been a part of my protocol forever. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. forever, but for the last five years, right? And it's yeah. been very important for me. And something I like how you're basically saying, read the cues of your body. Yes. Because with my asthma, for example, whenever I ate food that created mucus, that's when my asthma would flare up. Yeah. So I started to say, okay, I ate this, I created mucus. I felt, I felt it. I took it out of my diet. Right. So like I learned those things and I started reading books, you know, and I started learning about lectins, all the other stuff yeah. involved. But the first thing is just understanding my body. The, mm -hmm. the day, every, once a week, I fast pretty much every day. Mm -hmm. um, when I say that, meaning that I have, you know, a, a feeding and an eating window. Now, because mm -hmm. I'm bulking right now, my eating window may be 10 hours versus yes. or so on and so forth, but sometimes it's longer. But once a week, I still do this. I go to church on Saturdays, I worship on the Sabbath, and I fast on the Sabbath. So from yeah. the Friday, when I eat my last meal... I don't eat again till later on, probably like 20, 22 hours later, nice. later on, like four or five o'clock or so on the Sabbath is when I eat. Mm -hmm. Right. And there's, there's a spiritual reason behind that. I'm not going to get into, but the day after my fast, I feel like a whole different person. And yeah. that's when you're talking about understanding your body and the cues of your body. It's like when you do things that are good for your body, your body will tell you, yes, do this again. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Now, be careful with that, by the way. I just want to put a disclaimer. Don't jump into a 20, 22 hour fast. There are steps towards that, especially if you have like an underlying health condition or if you're not metabolically flexible. That's mm -hmm. a whole conversation. And of course, I have an article on that as well. So you can go to Ezekiel.com and check out our article where it talks about making met your metabolism more flexible. But at the point where I am in my life, where I have flexible metabolism, my body switches over to burning fat yes. when I do fast, right? Yeah, anyway. and that's, so, that's huge, right? One, one more thing, I'm sure you want to wrap up. I just got a plus on that because you're so right. Metabolic flexibility is a hallmark of a good, healthy metabolism. It means your mitochondria can burn all sorts of types of foods. And fasting, like you like you said, is one of the easiest ways to introduce metabolic flexibility to get regular ketone production. If you want to enhance that, you can even have a lower carb day going into that fast to get deeper into the fast more quickly. And then, of, of course, the dinner to dinner fast is something that we prescribe in our programs at month number two after someone's gotten like a little more metabolically flexible. It is foundational great health habit. And I love that you keep the Sabbath as well. That's just like, awesome, man. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you. And you know, I'm sure you're proud of me. It's like good to go us like good stuff. And also I think for people bulking and gaining muscle, like the 24 hour fast can be good too, because it improves insulin sensitivity, especially if you're feeding more carbohydrates, right? So you have like a lot of bulking. And then once in a while you do a little bit of this pullback, it can be very beneficial. Definitely, man. Definitely. I'm still gained. I mean, a pound of lean muscle month. I'm I, would, mm -hmm. I just say muscle. My friends get on me when I say lean muscle. All muscle is lean. <laughs> so I get about a pound of muscle going to the in-body a month, and I'm yeah. 40 years old. Nice. And I know that fasting is key in that. But as you know, I'm not going to wrap up because this episode will go a little longer because you're okay. giving us some good stuff. And I really want to ask you this because people are hearing all this stuff that we're saying, okay, fasting, 
you know, metabolic flexibility, lower inflammation. Oh, this stuff sounds good. But, you know, I just want to know I'm older. I'm struggling, losing weight. I don't feel the best doc. Where do I start? Yeah. It's like, think about your day and check a couple boxes. One, wake up, drink the water. That's a box to check every day. And like, how do you actually practically do that? Man, like get a glass, get a mason jar, get a jar, fill it with water, put it by your nightstand. It's looking at you in the morning so you can get that nice habit in there. Two, at least do what we talked about. We didn't go through a full meal plan. We talked about standardizing meal number one. Just get breakfast dialed in. You just do that one meal dialed in. You took one third of your meals out of the equation. That's like one third of your meals are now successful. And you're also being mindful of health. So there's a good chance you're going to be more successful in the back two meals. And you focus on protein and veggie kind of scenario. You're going to be in great shape, period. So the nutrition is like the structure. Three, check the movement box every day. Have you walked for 30 minutes? And if you can do that, I mean, this can be multiple five minute walks. Just get outside and start moving more. If you like to track and get data, track your steps, whatever, but just like move more. So I'm talking about water, nutrition, movement. Maybe you schedule one 24 hour fast per week. And if you tie it to spiritual purposes, I guarantee you'll be a lot more successful with it. And then finally, like get in exercise that you actually enjoy doing. If you enjoy biking, go bike. If you enjoy strength training, go strength train and just pick one or two times per week to schedule, put it on the schedule calendar like a meeting and if you miss it reschedule it but like you are bulking and you're training i get well, you get in every day six days a week twice a day so you're absolutely super scheduled and the schedule is every day lots but if you're just starting out get one or two on the schedule and just like slot it in so it comes down to looking at your day plan thinking about checking those boxes and then maybe you extend that out a little bit to so looking at the week plan am i going to get a fast in can I grocery shop once a week and do a little bit of meal prep to make life easier? And you just ask those questions and get some fundamental stuff in place. You're going to be moving forward. The good news is after 40, if you have weight to lose, you do these basic things I talk about, walking, hydration, standardized meal number one, strength training, cardio stuff, one to two times a week. That's all you need to do. You're going to be successful. And guess what's motivating? Results are motivating. Then you get this intrinsic motivation that starts to kick in, but you're not focusing on the weight. You're focusing on checking the daily boxes and rhythms. And yesterday may have gone great. It may have been a little challenging. You got a fresh new day, get back on it. And what you're doing is you're on this process of iterating every single day is you're retraining your brain. You're creating new neuro associations. You're breaking old habits. And that takes time because our behaviors are literally neural grooves that we've been doing for some time, let alone the emotional and mental baggage from negative self-talk or anything we've had to release or on our health journeys. It takes time to repattern. But if you get into the mentality of I'm going to work on winning today, and I know from this conversation, the basic things I need to focus on, I'm going to keep it simple around the water, standardized meals, walking, maybe a fast, maybe a workout every couple of days, you're in great shape. That's how you start. Only thing I have to add to that, because I'm you. that's a perfect list, right? Get some hugs in there. Get some hugs, <laughs> get some oxytocin in there. Nice. I'm telling you, change your life, man. Talk to people who make you smile and, nice. you know, and, you know, just touch your heart. And, you know, <laughs> if, if, if you're a believer in Christ, you know, read the scriptures, I mean, yeah. do things to just make you feel better. I mean, that's also a very important thing um, that I want to add into that. Right. But perfect list. Absolutely amazing. Um, doc. I mean, I can't say more than we're going to have you back on the show, maybe later in the <laughs> year, maybe next cool. year. I mean, this is one of my favorite episodes I've ever, ever shot. And with that being said, let my audience know, how can they learn more about your work? Get in touch with you if needed. Well, first off, I think it was great that you added the hugs because you made me smile multiple times throughout this episode. And I think people show up to this podcast, not because they just learn, but they get a transference of your energy. And that positivity is like, is amazing, man. So thank you for changing my nervous system into the feel good stuff from just you being you. Um, so I have programs for fit fathers and fit mothers, which are men and women over 40 who want to live long, strong and healthy for themselves and their families. You can find those at fitfatherproject.com, exactly as it sounds, fitfatherproject.com or fitmotherproject.com. And on those websites, we have all of our case studies, testimonials, free meal plans, supplements, all the stuff that we have there. Um, and our YouTube channels are phenomenal too. I think across the two channels, we have over like close to 900 videos, almost a million subscribers across the two channels. So like we have amazing videos on YouTube. If you want to get examples of the exact workouts we talked about, if you want to see me in the kitchen preparing a full day of healthy meals, all that stuff's on YouTube. So you can check that out there. But of course, when it comes down to the rubber meets the road, it's not just about information. It's about action. So the best people who get the best results are ones that actually commit to a structure. And if you want help building that exact structure, we would love to help you inside our programs. Thank you so much for being here, my man. And I feed off your energy too. I feed off <laughs> your energy too. It's not a, it's not a one-way street. It's not a one-way street, but I'm going to say this, this, um, his both websites are going to be in the description of the episode, which of course, 
are going to be in, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Both websites are going to be in the show notes, which are going to be in the description of the episode. Show notes are going to be zikahel.com slash fit project. That's as creative as, as I can get today. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm still writing off my workouts. I, I don't have too much blood in my brain yet. Yeah, it's all in but the muscles. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. exactly. But with that being said, thank you for being here, Doc. Thank everybody for listening. Thank you for watching. Go out there and hug some people.